Hello everybody, welcome back to Cryptic Woodworks. So we're looking at this linkage hinge box again. I showed this a couple weeks ago and it was my take on trying to get away from using a traditional mortised or rear mount hinge. And I had a couple of people ask if I could do a video on how I went and laid this out. Uh, so the first thing I'll say is that I used a wonderful video by Carl Holmgren, uh, also a YouTube video, and I'll put the links in here. I'm not going to go ahead and um, simply reproduce everything he did. You can simply follow that link, uh, watch what uh, he went and put together. It was very helpful and gave me a great start, and I highly recommend watching it. So as I was working on this, um, I did encounter a few issues, uh, and I think it would be good to kind of talk about the differences of what I found as opposed to the other video. Uh, the first thing is that my box is a little bit shorter, uh, and that posed a few challenges. And I also had the desire that I wanted the lid to be straight up and down when it's open. Uh, and I wanted everything to look real nice when it sat on the table. So those were the two issues that I had, uh, as well as the designs that I was going for. So in order to get started, let me move this guy out of the way. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to get some templates. Now these are the exact same size as the side of the box. So this is the bottom of the box, this is the top of the box, that way they can sit together. So we're going to use these to figure out where to put the linkages. And you want these to be the exact same size. Uh, I'd even recommend making several. Uh, I went through uh, a couple of attempts, uh, and it's good to have uh, two or three sitting sitting aside and ready for you, so you don't have to keep making more uh, if something goes wrong. So the first thing that we want to do is figure out the center of our uh, top piece. Uh, and this just happens to be where I wanted to put the linkage. I wanted to run about the center line. So this is about an inch and an eighth. So I will put a mark here at... Just a little over a half inch. And I'll go ahead and score that down. This will help me when I'm laying out the positions. So that's in place. So now once we have this, your other useful tool is going to be a compass. You're going to use this to do pretty much everything. So, as I said, I encountered some issues when I was working on trying where to put the linkages in order to make this open flat. So I wished at first that I could have it open to the point where the back would sit right against the box. Now here's the thing I found. As I was attempting to figure out where to put the linkages, nowhere seemed to work correctly. And it might just be because it's a box this small, or it's possible that I didn't try every possibility. So. Uh, you know, as you work through your own, you can give it a shot and see what you come up with. So what I found is that in order to get it to sit flush on a box this small, the top would actually have to sit below the box. And I didn't like that because the box wouldn't sit flat on a table. So what I ended up doing was moving the back slightly behind the box. There's a little bit of a gap. And that seemed to solve all of my problems. So the first thing you want to do is with the top nice and firm against the bottom of the box you'll take your dividers or your compass and set it about where you want the front of that linkage to go. Now here's where you get to just do some trial and error uh, and it will take you several tries that's why I said have a couple of copies of your templates ready and just open up your compass take it to where you think it might go I like to push down, give myself a little mark up there on the top, and just swing an arc. And then what we want to do is we want to take the top, I'll position it about where I want it to go. Uh, it can also be handy if you have a separate piece of uh, scrap here. Um, you can use that to keep everything registered nice and flat. Uh, might also be helpful to Give yourself some lines here just in case you need to move a piece back into place. I'll do the same thing here for the top. 
That'll help me put it back as I'm moving things around. Then, with this in place, you want to put your divider back up in your mark, and I can already see that it's not going to fit. Obviously, this divider does not reach the other line that I had in place. So what I'm going to need to do is open up the divider a little bit longer. So I'll put the top back in its original spot. I'll open this up a little bit further. Lock it down. Swing another arc. And I will move the top over back into its position. Now I swing an arc. I can see that these two cross over right here. So that tells me the center points for the arm that I need to put there. And then finally we do the same thing with the back of the box. Now what I found is that the small linkage that goes on the back, you want it to be nearly vertical, uh, but not quite. So this one's going to be pretty short. Uh, it will have to be fairly close to the back of the box. And again, I'll set the divider, I'll lock it, I'll push it in so I get a little bit of a mark there. And then I'll swing an arc here. And I will flip this back to its upright position. And we'll try not to move it. There's my hole, there it is. I can come back here, set that mark. And then this tells me the position of the rear hinge is going to be right here at this center point. So after you do this, uh, you wanna go ahead and make some arms. So these can just be some plain old little pieces of scrap. Uh, one of the best ways to go ahead and make these is to literally just set your compass to that opening. Go ahead on your arm and set your marks. And you just go ahead and drill those holes and you'll have nicely marked center points. So I have one of my old samples. And this is the piece I was working on when I made my box. And you can see I went ahead and labeled the thing so that I can uh, easily put it back in place. And once you have that, you can go ahead and put your arms in place. And you can even see it took me uh, uh, two tries even after I had the laid out version done. And we'll put those in place. And then this is how we can, this is where we can see if we might have any problems. Oops. And that pin came out. And we see this guy opens and closes quite nicely. So this will help you lay out the hinges and the linkage arms, figure out where they're going to go. Now the one thing I've noticed is that on this back, I'll take that out of the way, is this tends to be so close that the box was catching on this back point. And when you have the entire box flat, that's a whole lot more surface area, and it was binding a bit on me. So what I did, I'll grab my box again, was I came in and... I beveled that back corner just a little bit. And I did the same thing on the top of the box as well. And that seemed to solve the binding problem. It gave me just a little bit of clearance room. You can still hear it catching just a little bit. So depending on your uh, size of your box and where your hinges are or your linkages are laid out, you might need to adjust that a little bit. So finally, once you have everything all laid out, the truth comes when you go ahead and put the linkages on the box. 
And the good thing is, is that it's not, uh, at least I found it wasn't a, you get one try to do this. Probably not going to get more than two tries. Uh, however, I found that when I did put the, arm, the long arm on, the box was binding a little too much. Uh, and this is where things get a little weird. So you start to think, oh, well, if this is binding a bit when I open it, I need to lengthen this arm a little bit. Or, in a sense, op expand the distance between the two points. Uh, I actually found that you got to think backwards. You, you need to reduce the distance between these two points a little bit. And then that would allow the box to open correctly. So again, it just takes a little bit of playing. Uh, I definitely recommend, um, you might even want to build a, a sample plywood box uh, or a scrap wood box that's the exact same size you want to do so that you can play with the linkage arm lengths uh, and figure out how to make them fit exactly. Uh, I was able to fix one of mine by just drilling a slightly oversized hole for the screw. And then when I tighten that down, it seems to hold it in place pretty well. Nothing moves on me, and the box opens and closes quite nicely. So, I hope that wasn't uh, too rambling, uh, and that explained the process I used. Uh, like I said, go ahead and watch the other video. Uh, you should get a, a lot of information on how to build these. Uh, they take a little bit of time just swinging your arcs and figuring out where your center points can go, uh, as well as just a little bit of trial and error, uh, and then some prototyping. But all in all, I like the process, and once you do it a few times, it gets a little bit easier. So, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, just uh, leave me comments down in the video, and I'll see what I can do to help answer those. Take care.